Hello, I'm Noir Nerd and this is a, another Play Canvas tutorial in which we're going to be producing a virtual library. So I'll walk you through creating an environment, what some scripts we need to implement to create selectable books, and just generally how we can create a sort of prototype. 3D environment virtual gallery. Now this is something I've done over a few hours so it's still a prototype in itself but it's something that you can also extend and work upon in many different ways and utilize in many different ways. So without further ado let's uh, crack on with it and I'll open up Play Canvas and we'll We'll begin. First I'll demonstrate what I've managed to build on my own. So this is the sort of prototype that we'll be working towards or the equivalent similar to. Uh, I'm going to include in this tutorial a zip file with a bunch of assets so you've got textures and whatnot. We've got a little uh, so basically how it functions is I mean the environment's very basic it's not really that pretty even but it's more to demonstrate the functionality it's got a little banner here posters nice little dolphin <laughs> uh, but the basic idea of this is we have so the idea is that you can go to each book click so it's a brave new world to get a little synopsis the UI is very horrible, I know the minute, but uh, it's more about it's about 1984 now. Changes to press space to clear it. Not brave new world again. This should be Paradise Lost. There we go. The synopsis you can wander around with the synopsis in the side view until you click it to clear it. So I mean this could be used in a lot of ways though sort of I guess a sort of virtual archive which might be quite useful in that sense. Uh, obviously there's only three books in this version of it, so it's very basic, but anyway, let's get on with it. So let's go, let's create a new playgrounds project. So we're gonna create a blank project, we're gonna call it a library. I'll make this live afterwards as well. Tutorial. I'm going to make it private because I still want people peeking at it while I'm just working on it. Uh, yeah, there we go. So go to the editor now. Not seen, so this is just our opening scene. I'm going to assume you've got a little bit of play canvas knowledge before going into this, but uh, don't worry too much. I'll try and explain everything if you, if you don't. Uh, so I'm going to delete this box first, we don't need it. I'm going to delete the camera because I don't need it really right now. Uh, I'm going to create an entity called uh, player. And I'm going to add a camera to the player. Okay, and then we'll have to add a first person controller scripts later. But for now, Let's just build up our environment and so let's import in our assets as well actually. So if I create an assets folder called uh, well we'll do all of them first actually. So materials, which will be where we keep our textures, let's upload everything. So we've got a banner, book two. And like I said, I'll include all of these in the uh, um, in the zip file. Ceiling, want everything really. Okay, you can put that one in, you can put a different poster maybe. Okay, do that. Importing our materials. We want to import in some 3D models as well, so we'll do that as well. So we have folder 3D. Obviously, you can mix in some of it, yeah, assets and upload. And I want to get my table model. I'll do it bit by bit actually. So we've got 
Could it be a bit more tidy on the actual version of the lights? We've got done with this textures for it. Uh, more on the shelf, shelf, shelf. Okay. And then the OBJ object, shelf OBJ. Okay, which just imports the. And then we just add. Okay, so that's that imported and also I had a table as well, so I'll just get that into there so we can just create a bit of a it's not much but like a little bit of there we go, we got the table on there too. And we also want to upload the textures there for that, so just open that. So basically just importing all the assets we're going to use really. Also I want to create a UI as uh, folder, so folder, uh, UI. This only has one thing in actually, but that's all I don't know. Which is the uh, sort of circular icon. Select UI, which is just something I created earlier on. And then what else do we need? Oh, font. Because you need to import, import any fonts into It's quite important, so I'll just open that, import that here, and then move it into a folder called fonts. Just keeps everything nice and tidy and sort of makes sense of it. Fonts. Okay, so we've got everything nicely segmented now. So I think we'll create just a, for this, because this is a demo environment, the other one I created um, two rooms, but we're only really utilizing one, so I'll just make this a bit bigger, maybe. Uh, yeah, that's probably fine. 16, the X coordinate, maybe 10. So that's probably big enough for that. Uh, I'm going to add a collision and a rigid body component just so when I add the it's going to be type of static but I need to modify this to 8 so you see with the scale there so I'm going to make that half of that probably 0.1 because it's just the floor and 5 and you'll see the bounding box is now big enough so I guess the next thing we want to do is add the Controls, it's pretty important. Um, let's get a camera here. Check that. So I'm gonna add the controls. I just use the first person control example from Play Cameras because, uh, as I've said in previous tutorials, I don't want to reinvent the wheel for doing this. So we're just gonna get this. We'll just copy this. Then we will modify it later on somewhat not a great deal just basically modify it so that when you click um we'll create a new folder called scripts as well maybe scripts so keep everything tidy okay so add uh, player add component script and it's called First person movement, lowercase person movement, create that, and just copy and paste this basically. So there's a lot going on here, but um, I've sort of covered it in other tutorials, so I won't spend too long on it, but basically you add some attributes, um, and just event listeners for keys being pressed and that sort of thing. Let's just see if now I, I, sh I probably will follow the map straight away. And go out. No, I don't. Good, so that's sort of working. Uh, but I also need a co collision and a yeah, I need a collision and a rigid body on this. Uh, I also need to import ammo. Oh, that, so. Make change the collision to something like a capsule. That's an unusual one. And dynamic. And go to the script, pass it, 
make this a bit less powerful, otherwise it's going to be too much. And you'll just be like, fly off the map usually as soon as you move up on Oh yeah, I also need to put that angular factor, just make it zero, so you don't do that when you fall over. It's uh, quite confusing, obviously. There we go. I think I'm moving that. Yeah, so I'm moving. Oh, I'll fall off the edge because I haven't created any walls. But that's bada bing, bada bosh. There's a player controller in there. It's quite easy. So that's good. So next, I guess we want to make some walls. So just we're just going to make four walls. It's going to be pretty simple. Uh, so I'm going to get root, new entity, uh, primitive box. And basically, I'll just I think it's going to be sixteen. I think so it's the same same width of, as the uh, floor. Shift that a bit. Move that. I don't want to spend too much on all this stuff because it's not really. I do want to spend a little bit of time on it in case you're not familiar with it already. But yeah, basically it's just the usual process for creating a floor. And then let's just put that to floor. So it's a bit more nice and, and 0 0.2. Just want a thinner wall. I don't want it to be too thick. I think that's probably alright. And then I'll add a collision and a rigid body so I don't, I don't just fly through it. So it's again 8, 2, so I've got 1 or something like that. Yeah, that would be perfect. Perfect. And then I'll just rename that wall. I don't want to do this to be, so it's just a bit more descriptive. And if I go and play now, I should be bouncing off the walls, as it were. Yeah, there we go. Bounce, bounce. And then if I go here, Die. So that's what we wanted to do, which is good. I think I just need to move it down a bit slightly. I'm not exactly sure. I need really to. Okay, that needs to go down there. Probably need to do the left hand view just to get it exact and under. Is it left obviously? Just check on the perspective again. Okay, that looks sort of alright now. So I just need to do the, do the two other walls, which are going to be, I think, uh, just create the wall, just duplicate this, and then I'll just make it smaller, rotate it around. So rotate it like that, 90 degrees. Make it exact. It needs to be smaller. So I think it needs to be about 10, doesn't it? So I also need to make this 5. And there we go. We've got that slotted in quite nicely there. Duplicate it. Put it there. There we go. So now we should have our room. So if I just press play. And then next we'll texture everything, and then we've got a room basically. We we'll also add some light. There we go, so I've got a square room. Can't move out of it. Padded cell. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's that part done. That's easy enough. So I need to make, create some materials. So I go create material, call it wall, diffuse. No, okay, so yeah, how you add the texture is click on the uh, entity, go to material, click the edit button, and then just click the material we just created just then. So that's that. We just want to do that for each wall. I don't mean better wash. There we go. And we also want to add uh, create a material, new material, red carpet. Fuse and red carpet. 
and just select red color. Okay, so now we'll have a slightly more interesting room where there's stuff going on in there. We also want a ceiling probably as well, so select that uh, quickly. So we'll just go, we'll just, the easiest way to do that is to duplicate this, make it a box instead of a plane. And it's basically the same. And then just ceiling, make that material again. Ceiling, diffuse, ceiling. Just like that. And we're, we should be good now. It'll just be a bit darker in here, so we, as you can see, it's quite dark. A bit dark, so let's add a light, I think. Make it point like that, yeah. And just basically move it to where a light would be in the room, I guess. I'm not really adding it a light model. If we, we could make it better and add a, a light bulb, but no biggie. So I changed it to a point, and then now you can see we've got a room. It's just a basic room, but let's uh, let's add our shelves. So we're going to need shelves for our. Uh, so we want to create the, we'll just add the, create the textures for those shelves first, so it doesn't go in as like a, just get to diffuse, we've got them already done, and then we can go to specular as well, and add that, and also the uh, normal, we can add, oh, that's already added it, okay, cool. Okay, so, go shelf. We click shelf. Okay, so now I've added my shelf, it's textured. Uh, the shelves do look a bit weird, granted, they look sort of very bumpy, but it's just because uh, the model I, I downloaded, which is free online, it's, you can replace it with anything you want, really, to be honest. Okay, so let's just do a few of these, add a few shelves. This is obviously a bit of a different layout from the example, but it shouldn't really make too much of a difference. Okay, and just, another, just, just duplicate these over and over again. We can, we could add collisions to this, I'm not really experimenting with it much though, and the other one I didn't bother, but you can also do that if you wanted to. We'll just add these, basically. I will add the table in the middle just to give it a bit of more, the room a bit more life, I guess. And then we'll just breeze through to adding some UI for the actual book part, and then we'll get onto the scripting part after this. We are making some progress now, which is good. So you can just, you can just some good cases. That's a bit too. Okay, so we've got some bookcases. I, I think I need to move the player down slightly or make it a bit smaller. I don't know, or two. Or something like this. Or we'll move the camera down, let's see. Let's move it down a bit. Try that. Just a bit taller than I thought. Okay, so there's uh, the table textures. I'm going to add a material for the table. Table. I already had one, so it doesn't matter. Table base. I think we've got a table normal. Do you want that? And we've also got an occlusion. This one. There we go. Copy an occlusion. There we go. Get to table. And just click on table. Which will text you up. And then we just add it in like that. And then we can also add the collision on this, so you don't want to just be able to walk through it. And then we just body, static. I want to add mesh, and then we want to select the mesh to so be just that then adds collision for the table mesh. Like I was saying, we could have done that for uh, the bookshelves as well, but I'm not exactly sure how it would work with the. Oh, I should land on the table when I come in. 
I'm not exactly sure how that works with the way that I've done the book selection, so I'll just leave it for now. It's, like I said, the actual app I created before was experimental, so I'm not 100% sure it's completely accurate yet. But anyway, well, it doesn't really matter. That's that. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, uh, I guess we don't need to make this look that pretty, we're just demonstrating the functionality. So, let's start adding the UI. So, we want to go to camera, we want to go user interface, and we want to go 2D screen. We're adding a new 2D screen. So, this creates this line, a white line you can see around here. Uh, we just want to create a new text, user interface, text element. You can have a look at it on here, which is quite useful whilst you're doing it. So you can just flip in between. How I usually do it is move it and then flick it in between the live preview. So I can check for the positioning. So we're going to add something that just says book title. Where it says the text, I'm going to say book title. Inverted medium is already selected, which is good. You might have to select that though, potentially. It's pretty clever how it's automatically selected. I don't think I did that initially. Book title, so we'll change this title to uh, title. It's just, it's just like a placeholder. And then we'll put another one, which will be empty this time. Another uh, user interface text element called book title, which is where we'll like sort of inject our book title. It starts off with none. Sort of, I mean, the, like I said, I haven't really got the UI completely perfect, it's just more to demonstrate the, the principle, I guess, at this point. Okay, so that's good. And then we just want to add another one called User Interface. A uh, little bit annoying, actually, this isn't it? And it's not really that perfect to the one I created, but like I said, this project, the purpose of this project is to demonstrate something that you can build on. And, make it nice and pretty and everything else. So just add a text element here, which is going to be our description or content. Book content, call it that. And it's going to be empty because we wanted to show everything first. Until we add it, which we'll get onto shortly. When you basically click on the book, we're going to make that uh, probably Left anchor, no, not left anchor. Let's just keep it as a sleeper. Uh, you will, we'll be able to see anything in a minute because it's, it's not. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll fine tune that later because it's going to need probably fine tune anyway. Uh, oh, this one. I'm, Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll do this for it first as well, so we'll just make it bigger, the actual colder containing, because we'll be adding varying lengths of text to it. Like I said, something I need to fine tune a lot, probably, but what it is, it's, we'll get onto it in a bit. The next thing we want to look at is um, basically the. We want to add a, a script that does ray casting for the clicking on the books. So let's create a book first, and then we can get onto the scripting part, which is the main main thrust of this, actually. So we'll go to shelf objects. We'll just go to the middle one for now. We'll go in new entity. We'll go new entity box. Make it smaller. We're basically just making a little block for the shelf now. Move it up. Find it somewhere it's easy to find. Make it a bit smaller, it's too big still. Okay. Now we want to make it so it's going to look like 
a book would on a bookshelf, but also so that we can it's going to be easy enough to click on, which is just how the interfacing works at the minute, basically. There's probably there might be more efficient ways of doing it, I just just the initial way I figured out to do it. So like I said, this is sort of an experimental project really. I'm gonna rotate that around probably. Or maybe just leave it like that, that's quite keeps sort of diagonal. For the material we'll just add created in these books textures, so we go material, call it book one. We can have varying ones, different ones, but we'll just create this as this. Add book one, there we go. Okay, so now we've got to do several things really basically. So we've got to set up the raycaster and we've also got to uh, the raycasting from the camera and we've also got to set up what happens when that um, when, when it's casted to the book basically from the camera. So Let's go over that now. So, we're going to be putting the this script onto our camera. Uh, so, we go to camera, add component script, and call it um, pick a raycaster. Call it that. Bada bing, bada bosh. On in those on in scripts, let's move it there. Ah, let's open this up. So, first thing we want to do is we want to detect a mouse event. So, the initializing is the, this event this app mouse on PC event mouse down this on select this. Which is basically just uh, when initialized or on initialization of the, the script pick a raycaster, uh, listen for mouse down events. And then, when, when, sorry, when the mouse is down, we're going to write a new function called on select, which will do the raycasting. So we can get rid of this update, and get rid of all this at the bottom. Don't need any of it. And we add the following. So we've got prototype on the select, the function which is called when you mouse is down. And then we it's the ray casting here. App systems rigid body recast from two. We and basically what's happening here, I've got a bit ahead of myself, but I decided to copy and paste this because it's easier to demonstrate. I'll keep the console log in there actually because it's quite useful. Okay, so recast from this to the from the camera to the picked entity, which is the res whatever you are right it's raycasted to. So in this example, it could be anything. It could be a wall, it could be a ceiling, it could be the book. What we're interested in is the book. So I have this check here, it's an if statement which says if picked entity, which is this result entity, includes word, which is defined there as book, then we basically run the script which we'll write in a minute for showing the book UI, like the text and the uh, content. But currently, let's just see if that works in, in the most simple ways. Let's just save everything. We have to remember to save all. Sometimes on this, it can be a bit fiddly sometimes. I just click play, get my developer tools up. And hopefully, yeah, there you go. So you can see their entity so it's showing that I'm clicking on the wall. So you can see that it's registering the click event, it's registering where I'm clicking, and the picker raycaster is basically doing its magic. That book probably needs to go up a bit, probably. I'm a bit low down, but 
you can see it's just clicking walls. So there we go. So that's working, but now obviously we need to add a script for the actual book itself to relay some information. So we'll do that now. So I'll just call it show. Uh, what did I call it? Actually, let me just double check. Uh, I call it. What do I call it next? For example, show book UI. So I'll just duplicate that because it just makes it easier. Show book UI create script. That's the script which will add on every single book. Okay. So we're going to add two attributes to this. Um, just copied and pasted it again, sorry, but I just can't bother to write all that. So we've, I'll explain it anyway. So show you book UI. we add an attribute book title so you can add your own book title per instance of the uh, of the book. So at the minute the, the generic one is just book, book title and book description which is just generic one it's just nothing defaults to nothing descriptions there and we'll add via the editor just those uh, attributes and then we want to do the following the initialization we'll add this factor zero or this factor one And then in the update function, which is called every single frame, we're going to do um, if this factor is over zero. So, for example, if the pulse function has been called from pick array caster, which is here, pick density script show book UI pulse, so it's calling that if the uh, entity includes the book word. Which it will because it's should it should do anyway. Oh, actually, let's call this book. Where's it going to work? <laughs> uh, okay, that needs to be called book. So that needs to be called book. Oh, where's it won't work? Because it's checking for the name. Uh, but anyway, I've done that now. Sorry, I should have mentioned that before. Book needs to be called book, otherwise it's not going to pick up that it's a book. Unfortunately. Also, I need to add rigid body and uh, collision. Sorry, I should have, should have remembered that earlier on. Must be much, 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 much more than that. Much more. Well, I think I made it like. You can just do the use these little arrow keys if you want to do it quickly. Quite intuitively that way. So maybe something like this. Bada bing, bada wash. So we need to check that our in our UI we've got book title and book content. Book title book content that's correct so we see here it says if this factor is more than zero i use one then book title and book content are fine by root element text and then we want to that modifies the text and sets it to the attributes that we've added so we need to add those we add uh, go to the book go to where it says script pass the script it should now show me wait what Oh, I need to save it probably. Just doesn't obviously save, I have to manually save it often. What? Strange. Let me just restart this one. <sighs> There we go. So I'm using how to restart it for that to work. But let me go. We see our book title. So I'm going to put the the great book or whatever. This is an amazing tale of woe and adventure. 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 So that's our book title. That's our book description. Now, I doubt this will work first time. I'm invariably will have missed something, but let's just see what happens. 
Let's just to see if I can select the bug first. Probably needs to be a bit higher up, so I'll move it up. It's a bit low down at the minute, it's a bit hard to reach. Let's put it up here. Now I should be able to reach it. I think I need to put the player down a bit. I think the player's a bit too high up. There we go. It nicely worked. So that's good. We can get. We now walk up to the great book. So see it says none at first. Go up to it. Click in its general vicinity. It's a bit fiddly actually. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There you go. An amazing book of tale of world adventure. Uh, obviously, you need to fine tune a lot of that probably as well, but. That essentially works, which is good. So let's go make it a bit less power, just a bit too powerful. Let's see the speed. It just seems to work. That's a bit better. There you go, amazing tale of our own adventure. The, probably the last thing we want to do, just for the basic functionality, is we want to be able to clear the books that are selected. So, for example, if I, in a minute now, if I go to this book, and select it. I can't select anything else after I've selected it, which is not very good. Maybe these bookies. Because they're a bit small in a minute. It's okay. It's better. It's much better. Bigger. Bigger bookcases, more to scale. And you see if I walk away, unless even unless I selected another book or did something else, I've got no way of clearing that. So for manually clearing it I just add a uh, something to the first person controller. To first person movement. Very simply, all we're going to do is add a new if state if, if event. We're going to add a space, I think it's just key. It's uh, space, I think. Space, which is just where the space bar is. Not going to do that. Nothing to do with the Movement, it's basically just we want to uh, reset the so where we've got the scripts that so I could just get there, get the easy reference up for me. Where we've got this, we just want to re reset it back to nothing basically. So if we go back to where are you? here, and we just reset this to an empty string. Both of them to an uh, or non non in an empty string actually. So let's see that's a string non and just an empty string here. Da, da. Semicolon at the end, semicolon at the end. Oh, what's wrong with that? Oh, I forgot it. Always remember to close your okay. Twice need to do it. Okay, there we go. Let's go back on here. Press play. So essentially, if I just move these puppies out a little bit, I'll try that, see if that makes it a little better. Like I said, it's still, I'm still sort of a prototype in this thing, but I thought I'd demonstrate how you can sort of get parts of it working. Oh, functions, and I can create a sort of virtual uh, play canvas library. We'll have the, at least the foundations for that, so I hope it's been useful in some way. 
have a noir nerd. Um, leave it at that, I think. Don't think there's any much more I can go over with this one. Uh, obviously, this looks very bare, but you can make it look nice or make it look more like this. If you wanted to, you could spruce it up. You could do all sorts of things. You could create, um, you could get this from a, you can get the actual book data from an API, which would be probably more impressive. You could do all sorts of things. See, it seems to work here, but I'll leave the, the link to this uh, this project as well, so you can see that. Uh, if you want any references for like how to do things, because uh, this one looks a bit more stable than the tutorial version I just created now, which has this weird uh, sort of a bit. Seems to work and then not work for some reason. I did. Have, I sometimes have this one. This one for some as well. So. Probably needs refactoring some reflect or to make it better but anyway I hope that gives you a foundation in, in doing the project like this and uh, I hope it's been useful so with that I think I'll call it a day I've been all on nerd thank you for watching Later.